At the core of it, the ternary operator can kind of be described as a shortcut for the if-else statement, where we can even see in this example at the top of MDN that in this statement, we're saying if this person is a member, we're going to do something and pass that value. Else, we're going to pass in a different value. At the core of it, the nice thing about this is it's a little bit shorter and easier to read if you're just doing simple conditional statements inside of your code. To see what this looks like, I created a pretty basic example where we have a subtotal of $10. We have a variable that states, is something free? We're currently setting it to false. And then we're running through this statement that says, if something is free, we're gonna set the total value to zero. Otherwise, we're gonna set the total to that subtotal. And we're gonna log out that statement. And if we can run it, we can see that we get the value of 10, which means this item is currently not free, which we see here as false. Now, just as you would expect, if we change is free to true and we run that again, we're going to get zero because we say that if it is free, our total is zero. Now, we have another way of writing this where we can bring in our ternary operator and make this a little bit shorter to actually write inside of our code. Instead of writing this let total command, we can first change that to a constant since we're going to write this in one line and we can say if this is free and then we're going to use that question mark character, which is going to say that we're going to start a ternary command. We're going to say if it is free, we're going to pass in the value of zero else. Otherwise, with this colon character, we're going to pass in the subtotal, which we're going to actually be passing in that value for total. And we can even get rid of this if statement and let's see what happens when we run the script. We can see that just like our if else statement, because our item is currently free, we're passing in that zero, which is making this item a total of zero. And similarly, if we change this to false, just like before, and we run that, we now have that value of 10, because when we come into this if else statement that's written as a ternary statement, because back if we look at this ternary, we can see that if we have this value and it's free, we're gonna set the value equal to zero, Otherwise, else, we're going to set it to the subtotal. So in essence, what we're doing is we're using this one line to set this value of total conditionally. Now, the cool thing is not only can we pass values inside of this if else statement or ternary condition, we can also pass short expressions. So just as an example, if I change is free to discount and I set that equal to $5, we can say that if we have a discount, we're going to take our subtotal minus that discount, and we're going to pass that as the value. But if we don't have a discount, it's still going to remain that subtotal. And now if we run that script, we can see that because we do have that discount, it was subtracted and we have a total of five. Now, just like we had when it was is free, if we pass this as false and we try to run that again, we can see that we get that original total value because it went to that else statement inside of our ternary. And we're only getting that subtotal because we don't have a discount. Now, another feature of the ternary conditions is we can also chain those conditions like we can see here in this example where what's actually happening is we're saying if this happens, we have a value else. If this other condition happens, we have this other value. We can see what this looks like by adding back our is free statement. And let's first set that to true and set our discount back to five. So inside our ternary here, we're going to say if it is free, we're going to set our value to zero else. We're going to continue on with the rest of that other ternary, where we're going to say if we have a discount, we're going to subtract it. Otherwise, finally, the subtotal. Again, we can see what that looks like if we run that. And we can see that because it is free, as we passed in true up here, we're getting a total of zero. If we change that to false and try to run it again, because it's not free, we can see that it's now subtracting that discount that we have, and it's providing that value after the discount. And finally, just to be thorough, if we say false for our discount and run it again, we have our original value of 10. Now, even though we can chain these really as much or as little as we want, I would advise you to be careful how much you chain them, as the more you do this, the harder it's going to be able to actually read for people. That means it could be hard for whether your coworker is coming in and trying to understand what important business logic looks like, or maybe it's you six months down the road and you're still not sure what you're actually looking at. Just because something is shorter doesn't necessarily mean it's the best route. For instance, if we wanted to make sure this particular bit was easier to read, we can first break this up where we're going to create a new let called total instead of constant, where we're going to say if we have a discount, we're going to subtract it through. But we can also say after that with our total, 
If it's free, we can set it to zero since we know that's a static value. Otherwise, we continue on with that total. And we can see that if we run it, even after we change some of these values, we're gonna get them working just as we would expect them to. The ultimate goal of these ternary statements is to help you out making it a little bit easier to read, not extra confusing, where your job is already hard trying to figure this out. Ternary statements are powerful for how they can help clean up your code, but they can also become confusing when overdone. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.